Coach Alex from Electrum Performance here, and today I want to go over a little bit in terms of foot and ankle health. Not only are the foot and ankle oftentimes a bit neglected in the weight room and a bit deconditioned because the muscles aren't as sexy to train, but at the same time, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they're often a point of attack. So they experience a significant amount of trauma. It's important that we have ways to strengthen these structures when they're healthy and also have a plan of attack of things that we can do to start to regain function if we do experience some sort of injury from a foot lock, toe hold, etc. So I have Coach Matt with me here today and we're going to go over a, a foot and ankle series that we do while walking to try to warm up a bunch of ankles. Uh, <laughs> So I'm here with Coach Matt and we're going to go over our walking foot and ankle series where we address a bunch of muscles in the lower leg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in a forefoot position where Matt is up on his forefoot, the heels lifted off the ground, and he's gonna start feet neutral, which means they're not splayed out or in. And from here, without letting his heels touch, he's going to walk forward generally about 10 or 20 paces. For now, you get a good enough idea, Matt, go ahead and walk back. Cool, and he's staying neutral. He's up on the forefoot, not letting those heels touch. Once he completes that, we're gonna still be doing a forefoot walk, but we are going to be externally rotated. So his toes are pointed out. And from here, he'll do the same thing. Walk down for about 20 paces, turn around and walk back. Then after we've completed that, we're going to go internally rotated. Very similar position, up on the forefoot, not letting the heels touch, walking down and back about 20 paces. So this is gonna do a really good job of um, really warming up the foot, but at the same time, um, the gastroc and soleus. And we ideally wanna do this either barefoot or in socks so that the muscles of the foot are working as well. Once we have those three forefoot positions down, we're gonna do the same three positions, but on the heel. So now it's gonna be uh, warming up muscles of the anterior side of the, the lower leg. So we go neutral from the heel, about 20 paces and back. As soon as we finish that, We'll go externally rotated, walking on the heel still, and back. And then we're going to go internally rotated on the heel. Try not to let that forefoot touch the ground. Try to keep that internal rotation. Good. About 20 paces down and back. So we have those six initial positions, right? Neutral, externally rotated, and internally rotated for both the heel and the forefoot. Then we're gonna sort of put everything together and we're gonna do a neutral heel to toe walk where Matt steps out to his heel, supports all of his weight on that one foot, rolls to his toe and lifts his body weight. Good, steps across and lifts his body weight. Excellent. And we'll do the same thing about 20 paces down and back. If you're looking for a bit more of a strength stimulus here, you can obviously increase that distance. So now we're going to do some banded in and E version of the ankle, allowing us to focus on smaller muscles that can absolutely get damaged in jujitsu, but won't be targeted with traditional calf raises. So we're gonna take a, a thinner band like this, we're gonna place it around the ankle and pull it off to the middle, uh, the midline of my body. I'm gonna grab both parts of this band, bring it over the ball of my foot, and up the side, taking slack out. Now from here, I can change the resistance by how hard I'm pulling on the band. If this is more rehab oriented because we hurt ourselves, we're not gonna put that much resistance on here. If you're trying to be proactive and strengthen the ankle, we can go ahead and put more resistance on here. Regardless, we're going to relax the foot, allow it to passively evert here, and then without using my calf and dorsiflexing, right, like I'm pushing on a gas pedal, I'm gonna leave my foot in a similar orientation and just turn it to the side and invert at the ankle. And nice and slow, I'm gonna ideally perform 20 reps here. Generally about three sets of 20 reps where you pull the band to a resistance that makes it really challenging by the end of that set is ideal. So we'll do 20 here, right? We did that starting towards the midline. And then we're gonna do 20 towards the outside of our body, where we then still cross the ball of the foot. We pull it up. Again, we're not pushing on that gas pedal. We're relaxed here. And now it's gonna pull us into inversion. 
Now, if you've recently been caught in a toehold, you know, the, the question is, is it toe-held or toe-holded? Regardless, you were in a toehold in recent history. Um, it might be really hard to let this passively pull you into this motion. So only do what you can handle in terms of resistance and range of motion. Again, if you're healthy, try to get fully inverted. Some women in particular might have a huge range of motion here. So we allow the band to passively pull us into this motion, then we actively work against it nice and slow. Don't push on that gas pedal, right? Keep your foot up. And again, we're gonna slowly go through 20 reps at a resistance that makes 20 challenging and do about three sets. So now I'm gonna give you guys some options to train the calves. There's a lot of different ways we can do this, so I'm gonna keep it really simple. First thing we wanna keep in mind is we wanna do these from a straight knee or standing position and from a seated or bent knee position. That's gonna allow us to train both the gastroc gastroc and soleus, the two muscles that make up the calf. Um, the other thing that we always want to do, because our Achilles tendon is so elastic in nature, we want to make sure to have a brief pause at the bottom and at the top. So for the standing variation that I'm choosing to give you guys, Matt's going to be holding a dumbbell in one hand. He's going to be focusing on the same leg. We're going to go unilateral here. And he's holding on for support so he's nice and stable. He wants to keep that knee straight, keep your quad fired. He pauses at the top briefly, sink down, sink down, sink down, and pauses at the bottom. Good. You get a nice brief pause at the top and at the bottom. Try to make sure that we're always sinking lower than on this box. Excellent. So that's our standing or straight leg calf raise variation. So now we're going to try a seated variation. We can use a very similar setup where Matt is still going to be elevated by way of this uh, box or plate on the ground rather. And he's gonna make sure that uh, these dumbbells are not just on his thighs, but over his shin bones. So bring them a little farther forward so we're really loading that lower leg. We're still gonna keep a similar tempo where we go down passively, allow that muscle to lengthen, pause, come all the way up, 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 and pause. Excellent, and as you go through these, nice and slow, this is a great way for us to train those contractile fibers as opposed to just the elastic component of that big springy Achilles tendon that we have. So a leaning anterior tibialis raise is a great way for us to train these muscles along the front of the leg that oppose the calves by dorsiflexing the foot. So Matt has himself angled out from a wall or a rack. He allows his foot to plantar flex all the way down to this point and lifts his body by lifting the top of his foot up. To make this harder, you can angle yourself further out. To make it easier, you can move yourself further in. Um, the other thing we want to keep in mind as we're going is that we want to keep our hips forward. Don't let them dip back towards the wall or rack as you go. Okay, so uh, this might not be a great strengthening exercise, but once we've been injured, let's say somebody does toe hold us and it goes a little bit too far, um, we want to try to regain proprioception. And at first, this might be really difficult, so we want to really track our progress with this exercise. What we're going to do is we're going to test our single leg reach in four different directions. I like to set up close to a rack so I can have some support in case I do need to catch myself. So first, we're going to go out straight in front of us. So if I have an injured leg, that's going to be the one planted on the ground. I'm going to take my other leg and I'm going to reach out as far forward as I can get it. If I'm hurt, it might not go very far. If I'm a bit healthier, I might be able to get it much, much further. So that's our first direction. The next direction is gonna be straight out to the side and try to use this support as little as possible, right? I try to touch and come back in without using my hand. And if you're ever not sure, try to do it a couple times, right? Uh, exhibit a degree of control like I am here where I'm not like stepping out to it and stepping back. We wanna really measure how much control we can exhibit in each direction. Then we're gonna go out behind us. We sort of hinge at the hip, reach back with that leg and back in, right? Always touch back at the center, reach out and back in. And the last direction, we're gonna sort of cross behind the support leg and reach out to our other side. So I step here and back up, here and back up. If you can, try to even, if you're in the rehab process, you might even be able to mark the different spots on the floor to show your progress. And as we start to regain some of that proprioception in the lower leg, it can demonstrate to us that maybe like now we're ready to start drilling or even as we start to get really far out, maybe we are indeed ready to start rolling again.